Here, we'll be given some data from a titration and asked to use this data to calculate the concentration of an ion in a sample. We'll start by looking at how we handle titration calculations in general. Titration calculations in CHEM 12 involve the reaction between two reactants, which we'll call A and B here. In the center of all titration calculations are the moles of reactant A and the moles of reactant B. We represent number of moles in chemistry by the letter N. Reactant A represents the reactant that we're given enough information to find the number of moles of. To convert moles of A to moles of B, we always use the mole ratio, or coefficient ratio of B to A in the balanced equation for the titration reaction. The information we're given about A could be the molar concentration of A, represented by the letter C, and the volume of A in liters, represented by the letter B, or it could be the mass of A in grams, represented by the letter M. Whatever we're given, step one of a titration calculation is to convert what we're given to moles of reactant A, or Na. Step two of any titration calculation is to convert moles of reactant A to moles of reactant B. This is done using the mole ratio, or coefficient ratio, of B to A in the balanced equation. We could be asked one of three different things for reactant B. We could be given the volume of B and asked to find its molar concentration, Cb. We could be given the concentration of B and asked to find its volume, Bb. Or we could be asked to find the mass of B in grams. Step 3 in any titration calculation is to convert moles of B to whatever we're asked for, concentration of B, volume of B, or mass of B. So here is a generic diagram that outlines the possible steps to take in most titration calculation problems. Remember the first step is always to find moles of what we can. Let's do an example precipitation titration question. A 50 milliliter sample of a solution known to contain chloride, or Cl- ions, is titrated with 0 0.100 molar AgNO3 solution. A small amount of sodium chromate is added to the sample as an indicator. Three separate trials are done. We're asked to find the concentration of Cl- in the original sample. The results are recorded in a table, like this. The first thing we need to do is calculate the volume of AgNO3 solution used in each trial. We do that by subtracting the initial burette reading from the final burette reading. So in trial 1, it's 4.46 minus 0.95, which is 3.51 milliliters. For trial 2, the volume is 7.65 minus 4.45, which is 3.20 milliliters. And in trial 3, the volume used is 10.87 minus 7.65, which is 3.22 milliliters. Taking a look at these three results, we see that the volume used in trial 1, 3.51 milliliters, is considerably higher than the 3.20 and 3.22 used in trials 2 and 3, respectively. For that reason, we just discard the value of 3.51. We calculate the best average volume of AgNO3 by taking 3.20 plus 3.22 and dividing by 2 which gives us 3.21 milliliters. We'll make a note of the average volume of 3.21 milliliters up here in the table. We'll convert the 3.21 milliliters to 0 0.00321 liters. At this point, let's dissociate the AgNO3 here. And we get Ag plus and NO3 minus. And we'll dissociate the AgNO3 here also giving us Ag plus and NO3 minus. The nitrate ion NO3 minus is a spectator ion. It does not form any precipitates, so we'll just discard it. So we can simply say that the concentration of Ag plus is 0 0.100 molar, and the volume of Ag plus solution used is equal to 0 0.00321 liters. So we have all the information we need up here now. We'll just rearrange it a bit. So it looks like this. 
we have the concentration of Ag plus and the volume of Ag plus here, and the volume of Cl minus here. At this point, we'll convert the 50 milliliters of Cl minus solution to 0 0.0500 liters and leave it like this. Here is the generic diagram we came up with for titrations. We're given the concentration and volume of Ag+, and we're asked for the concentration of the other reactant, Cl-, and we're given its volume. We'll start with the concentration and the volume of Ag+, convert that to moles of Ag+, then find moles of Cl-, and use that and the given volume to calculate the concentration of Cl-. We can do the first two steps using conversion factors. We take the concentration of Ag+, which is 0 0.100 moles of Ag+, per 1 liter of Ag+, and multiply it by the volume of Ag+, used, which is 0 0.00321 liters of Ag+. If we cancel out the unit, liters of Ag+, we're left with the moles of Ag+. So evaluating this would give us moles of Ag+, or NAG+. However, rather than stopping here, we'll add another conversion factor to get the moles of Cl-, or NCl-. Looking at the coefficients of Ag+, and Cl- in the balanced net ionic equation, the mole ratio is 1 mole of Cl- to 1 mole of Ag+. We'll cancel out the unit moles of Ag+, and we're left with the unit moles of Cl-. So evaluating this expression will give us the moles of Cl-, or NCl-. 0 0.100 times 0 0.00321 times 1 over 1 gives us 0 0.000321 moles of Cl-. To convert moles of Cl- to concentration of Cl-, we'll use the formula C equals N over V. NCl- is 0 0.000321 moles of Cl-, and the volume of Cl- solution, VCl- is 0 0.0500 liters. So the concentration of Cl- in the original sample, CCl- is 0 0.000321 moles of Cl- over 0 0.0500 liters of Cl- which equals 0 0.00642 moles per liter, or 0 0.00642 molar. You may want to pause the video at this point so you can take a screenshot and use this as a copy of the whole solution to this problem. So we can summarize by stating that the concentration of Cl- in the original chloride solution was 0 0.00642 molar.